right guys it's Michelle from Cozy Egg today is Monday July 8th 2019 and this is episode 76 so um, if you are new here thanks for checking me out um, if you are a returning viewer subscriber thanks so much for joining again I appreciate it and we'll just jump right into it so um, as per usual, since it's been a month, I have a lot to show you and a lot to talk about. Um, I guess one of the first things is, um, you know, I talked in my last video about kind of going through my projects and taking stock of what I have, um, you know, specifically triggered by um, a program that we had at my quilt guild. I'm kind of looking at, you know, your your um, quilt whips and what stage they're in, and you know, really taking a good look if taking stock of whether you really want to continue with them or not, um, and then from there determining. You know what to do with it if you're not interested in continuing with it um, and so I talked about sort of applying that to my stitching whips as well and uh, in one of Jessie Marie's latest videos she talked about that and kind of how she was applying that to her own projects and I think she pulled out several that she decided she just wasn't interested in stitching. Um, they just really weren't her style. So um, I think she was going to, you know, sell the chart, the supplies, that sort of thing. Um, and then I think she had a couple where she decided that she was going to restart them at some point, um, either on different fabric or, you know, something like that. So, um, so pleased that that was helpful, at least to her. I hope you know, maybe some of, uh, you know, some other folks have maybe found that helpful and you've started to kind of look at your whips and <clears throat> taking stock of them and taking stock on whether or not you want to continue with them or, or not. Because if it's, you know, if it's sitting in your whip pile, but every time you think about working on it, you don't want to work on it. Maybe it doesn't need to be in your whip pile. <laughs> so, um, I am still in the process of going through my things. Um, you know, I haven't really had a huge amount of time that I could just sit down and devote to that. So I'm having to do it kind of in fits and spurts. Um, but I thought that I would fits and starts. Anyway. <laughs> I thought I would show you the couple of things that I ran across that I decided maybe don't need to live in my whips anymore. So, let's see. First of all, I did find that I had a number of charts that were stuck in project bags that were, you know, things that I had not started, hadn't kitted up wasn't intending on starting anytime soon so those came out of the project bags and went like with my other charts <clears throat> okay so the first one this is um it was a freebie that blackbird designs put out in 2014. um and so it was going to be a stitch along. They published this, you know, freebie pattern on the blog. And everybody, of course, immediately got so excited and decided, yes, we must kit this up and all stitch it together. So I had, um, I had finished, and so it's called Her Sampler 1796. And here's kind of what it looks like. You get the idea. You've probably seen this. Um, 
And again, it's a freebie pattern. I believe it's still available on their blog. So, <clears throat> I had some leftover Confederate gray linen from when I stitched my memorial sampler for my dad. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to use the rest of that and I will start this piece. And when I pulled the threads for it, as is often the case with Blackbird Designs, the photo of it looked very different from the color of the threads due to photography differences or <clears throat> colors on monitors or changes in dye lots for over dye threads, etc. So when I originally looked at it, you know, the big pieces that kind of, you know, called out to me were that it looked like it had pinks and reds or raspberries, golds and grays. And I really liked that color palette. That was of course not what came across. So I did my own conversion and, you know, picked some threads. I had pulled Gentle Arts Wood Smoke, um, Weeks Raspberry, Crescent Colors River Rocks, <clears throat> Crescent Colors Jakey Brown, and then I think a couple others that I have since pulled out of here. And these are some of the things that you find when you're digging in your stash is I found this cool thing that a friend of mine gave me many years ago. And I totally forgot that I had it. I don't think it's a needle gauge because there's no um, there's no sizing on this but I think that it is probably more like a thread holder and that says create on it if you can't read that so anyway I found this cool thing I also found my Tudor Rose scissors with my Tudor Rose scissor pop that was from our anniversary tea. Our 10 year anniversary tea. That was 10 years ago. Anyway. So I started this. And that's how far I got. And where I got hung up with was this gold alphabet down here is supposed to be four-sided stitch. Now, you know, I don't have any problem doing the four-sided stitch, but this is 40 count and it's weeks linen, so it's a little loosey-goosey. And being 40 count, my four-sided stitch is not very defined. So particularly when you look at the A, it just looks like a big blob. Like it does not look like anything. So I kind of lost interest in it at that point. And then I found something else I wanted to do with some of this Confederate gray linen. So I chopped off the bottom half of it. So I don't even think that the sampler would fit on here anymore. This way, obviously. So, and this is not anything that I ever want to go back to. Like I never think about picking this back up. Um, I just wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy with 
how it was looking on the linen. You know, and I had stitched an entire huge sampler on this fabric. So it's not like my issue was really with the fabric. But I decided that this no longer needs to be a whip. So I'm going to unkit it and put these threads back in my inventory and I can put my scissors someplace else and my cool little thread palette thing somewhere else and then I can use the rest of this little scrap of fabric for ornaments or something but it's no longer going to be this so that that was actually a pretty easy decision <coughs> And I apologize, I'm like majorly clearing my throat. I got over my cough finally, um, but my allergy's been really bad, so I'm clearing my throat a lot. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one. This one was also an easy decision. So, uh, and here's one of the charts that I have in with other stuff that doesn't need to be in here. And I also found a piece of linen that probably doesn't need to be in there either. I don't know what I was intending to do with this, but it doesn't need to live in there. So. I think I started this maybe like the first dark October. I don't remember. So this is the talking board by Primitive Needle. And I take all my charts out of the plastic sleeves. I mean the you know the poly bags. So I just put them in notebooks. Um, so I've had this chart forever and ever. Have wanted to stitch it forever and ever. Finally decided, you know what? I'm just going to start it. So I picked up this fabric that I had on hand and decided, yep, this will be great. It wasn't great. So this is basically like I want to say it's like khaki dirty something linen I don't know I don't know what it is but so that's my start and I basically worked on it in Dark October and then that was it. I haven't picked it up since then. And it's because I'm just not excited about it because I just like, this to me is what I call forcing a start where I want to, for, where I want to start something but I don't have the actual supplies on hand. I don't have what I really want to do it on but I'm so you know, anxious to start it that it becomes a forced start. And 99% of the time, those don't work out for me. So, this is going to be restarted. And I don't know what fabric I'm going to put it on. I'm going to use the called for threads. I already have those. I actually bought them specifically just for this piece. Um, so I had them you know, living in here. Um, the model was stitched on 40 count relic. Picture this plus, and it calls for charcoal and weeks charcoal and bark. So I already have those. So I don't know if I'm gonna do it on relic or if I'm gonna choose something else, but it's not this, because this is horrible. So, 
that is going to get restarted at some point. So I'm pulling it out of my whips. <clears throat> and I actually took the threads and I just put them in with Sampler Sisters because I had run out of charcoal. Um, so I can use that now. So <laughs> I've got more bark than I know what to do with, but that's okay. I'm just going to use what I need for Sampler Sisters since that's a whip and it's on fabric that I'm enjoying. And then I'll order fabric for this at some point and restart it. So that's done out of my whip pile. The next thing that I have I'm going to call this also a forced start, sort of. So this past year was my first year to participate in Stiach. And I thought it would be fun. You know, I wanted to stitch along with everybody else. I picked a color palette. And my color palette um, was black and this bright pink, purple, and green. And it was based on a photograph. So it was mainly going to be black, purple, with, um, and green with some just accents of this pink. And then I had this gray fabric, mystery fabric in my stash. And I thought, okay, and this was one of my dyeing experiments, actually. It started off white. Um, I thought, okay, I'll just use that. So I started this, and that's how far I got. And so the, what it, it will eventually say is home is where the blank is, basically. And you fill in the blank. And they give you different options. Um, Michelle Bendy did, you know, where the Millennium Falcon parks. Um, I just was not enjoying stitching this. And then once they revealed the end, I couldn't make a decision on what I wanted mine to say. And I wasn't feeling really like drawn in one way or another. Like they had a night veil option and I love night veil, but I didn't really love the option for night, <coughs> for night veil that they chose. So I think I'm done with this. So I may salvage this fabric. It's not great fabric. I may salvage it to use for ornaments or something. I don't know. <coughs> but I think I'm done with this. Like of, of all the things that I want to stitch, this isn't one of them. So. I'm done with that. And then the last thing, and like I said, there's more that I need to go through, I just haven't yet. So I started this a bazillion years ago, and I don't even know if they're, yeah, I have a picture of it. I started this a bazillion years ago. It's a Hade. It's my one and only Hade. Um, I got really, really into Hade charts, um, you know, when I was first starting out. This is 2005 copyright, so this was probably 2005-2006. And during that time, I was like really, really into Hades, and so I purchased like a million of them 
and I have only ever started one. And the one that I started, um, it was a series. It's a quick start, so it's a smaller piece. Um, and she did four of these, one for each element. And there was um, a, a friend of mine, a blogger at the time, who I think had done Earth. And then I think she got started on another one. It was either air or fire. So I decided that I would, and I loved them, and I loved the artwork. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to start on air. So this is Heaven and Earth Designs. This is Water, A-C-E-O. Um, and so this is by Sarah Butcher. It's artwork by Sarah Butcher. And so this is water and um, obviously she's a mermaid. And I just loved this. Absolutely loved it. I love Sarah Butcher's artwork. So, but having never done a hay before, I wasn't entirely sure what I was getting myself into. I believe this is 28 count and I was doing one over one full cross. And so I started this, this is how much I have done. And what I have done looks great. Um, I started this obviously parking um, and you know working in 10 by 10 blocks but it's kind of a slog and I picked it back up briefly a couple years ago and I thought, you know what, instead of doing parking, I'm gonna try to do some cross country. So I did a little stitching here to see if that worked out better for me. I don't know if it did or if it didn't. Probably in the grand scheme of things, that might be the way to go for me. Um, My problem is, I just don't know if full coverage is something that I'm really gonna do. I love them. I love looking at them. I love watching people's progress on them. I would love to have this stitched and finished and hanging somewhere along with the other three. <laughs> I just don't know that I love it enough to invest the time in it. And it would be like, it would be a major time investment, even for something small. So, I mean, it looks really good. I think it looks really awesome, but Don't, I don't know. So, I think at this point, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pull it out of my whips. I'm going to unkit it. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything with this. And maybe someday I'll come back and revisit it. But I think for now, I just have to say... This is just not something I'm gonna stitch. It just isn't. And I, you know, there's a part of me that feels like, but I might want to at some point, and I can always re-kit it, I can always come back to it. But I think for now, I just don't even need to consider this a whip anymore because 
all the work that I did on it was probably back in 2006. And I really haven't touched it since then. So, other than that, you know, like two nights that I worked on that one little thing. And then said, yeah, I don't know about this. So, all right. So those are my whips that I have decided to let go of. And um, we'll go from there. So, shall we talk about what I've been working on? More to come on those, too, by the way. Um, okay, so let's talk about what I've been working on. I have a whole pile here. So, first up, Anniversaries of the Heart. And... I have it out of the Q-Snap, so I can actually show it to you. And, okay. So here's what the whole thing looks like currently. I don't know if I, it's in front. So that's the whole thing right now. So I just have, I have the block that I'm working on, which is block 12. And then there is a bonus block that's like the size of two blocks. And then that's it. So let me show you a little more close up. So I had been working on block 11. Which is this one. And I got that finished. And so this one uh, was dedicated to my sister and Eric's sister. So um, I had to rechart this block a little bit in order to get everything to kind of work the way I wanted it to work. So I made this box smaller. I moved the house down and that allowed me room up here to put some more personalization. And I love the way that it turned out. I'm really happy with it. And I think I actually started and finished this one pretty darn quick. Um, and that was due in part to several Magical Stitches homework. So um, I used, I had used it for like, like when I showed it to you last time, I had just done, I think, a thousand stitches on it. Um, and then the next week we had um, still part of the Triwizard Tournament. Um, it was the second task where um, the house elves had taken our most prized whip to the Black Lake. And so we had to stitch a thousand stitches on whichever was our most prized whip. So of course I wanted to keep going on this. So I did another 1100 stitches on this. And then um, and I got block 11 finished up. So, finish that. Then I started on block 12. So, here's where I'm at on block 12. And I kind of have jumped around a little bit. So, here's what block 12 looks like. This is what block 12 looks like. And here's where I'm at. So I've got a little more to go on the houses. A few more snowflakes in there. And then I have like the personalization down at the bottom and the rest of the border. So, I worked on this. Um, we had uh, one of our homework assignments was to make a love potion and you needed um, 
five different elements. So you needed, so I used this for air um, because the snowflakes and the snow fall through the air. Um, for earth, I used the green border and I got a bunch done on that, that green border. Um, for fire, I started on this red house. Um, and I think you had to do like 300 stitches each or something. Um, and then wood, which was the um, the fifth element, I actually started this house and said, you know, it's a wood house. So, and that's basically what I did for homework. And then I put this aside because I had run out of my end dive thread or on Dive for those of you that are fancy. Um, and that is the color that is called for in that border. It is the color of these windows and the roof on this house. And I think it may be called for in this house also. So I kind of got to that point where I was stuck and couldn't really do anything else. Um, so, oh, and then, um, oh, I guess I did come back to this. So I did come back to this. I still had something, I did find something to use for water element, which I'll come back to that. But then I did also use this for the next week for um a project that has two things that are touching and obviously there's a whole lot of things in here that are touching like the bird is touching the heart um you know these swans are touching the border etc um i use this for a project that you needed help with so when i decided to start this um I had Lois from Elegant Stitch in California help me figure out what fabric to use because I wanted something that was dark enough that this first block really showed up because it's so light colored and it's not showing up very well there. It shows up better in person when it's not so wrinkled. Um, I needed something that was dark enough that that would show up, but then, you know, not too terribly dark because there are so many variations of color here um, and so she helped me pick out this is vintage exemplar um, 40 count lakeside so this was a project I needed help with um, and then uh, for something that makes you laugh and I said you know this makes me laugh because it makes me happy because it has all of my family on it so but you know then at that point I was stuck so I have more thread ordered hopefully it will be here soon um, and it is coming with some threads that I need for the bonus block um, which is this so there were a handful of threads that I needed for that. Go figure. Um, you would think I would have all of them at this point, but no. So, um, so I worked on Anniversaries of the Heart, and I have not worked on it in a while because of that. So, I'm anxious to get back to it. Um, and so, for uh, for that week that we had to do the elements. Um, for water, I worked on From the Deep because it was really the only thing I could think of. And this is living in my Harry Potter potions bag. And so on, this is From the Deep, Plum Street Samplers, and I was really just working on filling in this background. So that whole circle is going to be filled in um, with that kind of blue-gray. 
and that's all that I have left on this is just filling that in. So I really love how this turned out. I'll be happy to have all that fill in done, but it was the perfect piece to work on um, to knock out those few stitches that I needed for that. So worked on that for water and then uh, let's see. So I finished block 11, I started block 12, I worked on From the Deep, and then, um, then I worked on Egypt Garden. So I had started, and this is an Amomaly bag, hello, Amomaly bag. Um, I had started on an extra credit way back and I needed to kind of circle back around and go back and finish that. So I pulled this back out so I could finish that extra credit assignment before the year was over. So here's where I'm at. And I have my Isis needle minder now on here. Um, and this is on 32 Count Days Gone By by Silk Weaver. And it is kind of a sandy color. Hard to tell, anyway. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I'm just working on the center. Um, I got all these little dark blue deals done. And then I started working on some of these lotus flowers. So. I actually enjoyed working on this. Um, I use this journaling app called Day One. Um, and so I do all of my journaling electronically, which is nice because then it's, um, not only is it backed up, but also I can use it, you know, on my iPad or on my phone. I can add photos, I can add videos, I can add um, voice memos. And one of the cool features that it has is on this day. And so like when I, if I'm looking at, you know, July 8th, it'll show me all of the um, posts that have been done on July 8th, like back through however many years. And so typically when I open up my, uh, my app in the morning to do my journaling, the first thing I do is I look back at, you know, previous posts for that day. And so, um, all of my posts really for like, you know, May, June, July have been, um, I've been seeing all of my 100 days that I spent on Mystery 9 and um, just kind of watching that progress, which is ma it was making me kind of long for working on the Chatelaine again. And so I was really glad to pick this back up and work on it. Um, but my, my 100 days... Um, that I did for that and I think it took me 111 and then of course Emily's big finish on her um, his eyes on the sparrow after working on it for um, basically two months <laughs> made me kind of think about you know maybe I want to do another like 100 day challenge um, but as soon as my thread gets here I'm going back to anniversaries of the heart because my plan is still to have that finished by the end of summer. And really my goal is to have it finished by my birthday, um, which is August 22nd, because I have um, a plan for what I wanna start on my birthday. So I'd like to have anniversaries of the heart done before then. Okay, so that was Egypt Garden. And the extra credit assignment I was using it for was something a project that that starts with one of the letters in the word goblet so e obviously all right and then the next thing that i worked on um 
I pulled out Black at the Sky. Which is in this Mama Joan bag. It was a gift. So I worked on Black at Sky for two um, for two assignments. One was um, something uh, stitched in gray or black and so I thought it was the perfect opportunity um, to come back in and fill in uh, this top border. So I got that all filled in all the way halfway. So I'm pleased about that and I really love the way it looks. Um, and so then our next assignment was to work on some a project that had a grave or a graveside scene, graveyard scene. So I figured this block obviously counts as well as this one. Um, and the whole thing's a morning sampler anyway. So um, I worked on block four some more and got a little bit done there. So still loving how this looks. Um, I really kind of wish that that thread for block four showed up a little bit better. I'm hoping maybe once I get more in there, it'll show up better because right now it's just sort of fading into the background. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but I love working on this piece. Like any chance I can get to work on this piece, I love working on this piece. It's a special, special piece. So, Blacked Sky, and here's what the whole thing looked like. So, I'm working on that block right there. So then, um, this past week was um, obviously the start of July, so it was the start of a new year in Magical Stitches, so we're on year five now, and um, we're supposed to be reading uh, is it Half-Blood Prince? No. Whatever. I'm still reading Goblet of Fire. So, and obviously my brain's not working. So, for this homework assignment, I thought I would do double duty. And, oh, this is my... Christmas, one of my Christmas project bags. So, uh, I decided that I wanted to join in with um, Diana, it is Kismet's uh, Kismas in July Sal for her um, birthday Sal and join in with a Christmas project. So, I chose to pull out Jenny Bean's Christmas sampler. By Shakespeare's Peddler. So I stitched Jenny Bean's Halloween sampler like as soon as it came out a million years ago and it is to this day still one of my absolute favorite pieces I have ever stitched. I had so much fun stitching it and when she came out with the Christmas sampler I fell in love with it. Um, I love the verse on it. It says, and had I but one penny Thou shouldst have it to buy gingerbread. So I just love this piece. And so um, I started it several years ago. And I started it, um, we'll just say that there was some, there were some things that were going on in my life that were very difficult. And so I started this piece as a way to kind of 
take my mind off of it and you know try to bring some happiness into my space and it maybe you know worked um, the unfortunate side effect of that though is that every time I pull it out that's what I think of so Part of the reason I wanted to pull this out and work on it as opposed to some of my other Christmas pieces is that I was hoping that by working on it at a time of year other than Christmas time that I might be able to disassociate those memories a little bit and give it some new memories. I'm not sure how successful I am with that. But here's where I'm at. So when I picked it up, I had the house, the two trees, all of the letters over on this side of the house were done. Um, and the snow underneath the house was done. So since I picked it up, I have done the A, B, C, D, E. I've done all those holly leaves across the bottom and then this star. And then there's a couple little stars up here at the top. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. I am using the called for fabric, which is 40 count vintage Navy bean, um, by Lakeside, as well as the called for colors, which are, um, gentle arts. And I love it. I think it's beautiful. When I look at it, it makes me happy but stitching on it, not so much. But, you know, Jessie Marie talked in her, um, in her video about, you know, when she was thinking about projects that maybe she didn't, you know, want to keep as whips anymore. There were some that even though she really doesn't love working on them, she wants the finished piece. So she's keeping those in her whip rotation. And that, that's the same thing that goes for this one. I love this piece so much. I want it finished. I want to have the finished piece, but I was really, really struggling to work on this. And also, um, that week that I, um, was starting on this, I think, or no, maybe it was the week before. It was when I was working on Anniversaries of the Heart. My stitching light died. I had had some dental work done and I was my mouth was super, super sore after that for several days. And so I didn't get a whole ton of stitching in. And then this week, you know, last week when I was working on this, I was doing good to get like 10 stitches in every night. I was, it was just a struggle. But I really think it's so pretty. But yeah, it's this is a hard one to stitch on for me. But um, I have another. Uh, I have there's an extra credit assignment for this year that has, um, that's for a Christmas piece, so I can use it for that. Um, and of course, I've enjoyed, you know, being part of the stitch along and working on, oh, that was part of what I used it for as far as homework went. It was um, a project that you haven't worked on in more than five months. And then, um, Oh, for your boring neighbor, work on something that's boring. And so I was working on those holly leaves, which were not super exciting. But that's what I worked on. And then the third homework assignment for war last week was for a Dementor attack. And since the Dementors have no faces, um, you had to work on something that had no faces. So like no animals, no insects, no people, no nothing. Um, and I really kind of struggled to find something that had no faces in it because 
almost every one of my pieces has a bird or, you know, Adam and Eve or something. So I finally decided to dig this out. And so this is, this is a freebie by Mary Wind Farm that's a hornbook design. And it was on her blog, um, and I can link to it in the show notes, but you can also go and just Google on Mary Wind Farm hornbook, and the blog post should come up. So it's basically, you know, alphabets, numbers, and then it has this little verse. That's at the bottom of it. So it has this verse, um, and a bunch of people in my guild had started this um, because there was a, um, one of the members had all of these horn books that she had like painted and distressed and um, offered them to us if we wanted to stitch this freebie. So I took her up on the offer. I've shown the horn book itself here before. Um, so I started this piece. Now, this is another one of those pieces that I hate stitching on. Um, mostly because of the linen. Because it's weeks, tin roof. Um, it's just kind of boring to stitch on. But it's one of those pieces that I really want the finished piece, so I'm gonna keep going. So I have actually, you know, I had such a hard time stitching on Jenny Bean, and I was just sort of unsettled and not able to really concentrate and stitch all last week and most of, you know, this weekend. So I wasn't really sure how this was going to go, but actually have gotten quite a bit done. Um, let me put this behind it so that you don't see through it. So here's where I'm at. So when I start, when I picked this back up, I had done down to this row. So I've done all this in the past couple of days. And like last night, I did all of this over one. So I'm kind of to the point now that, you know, once I have the over one verse done, then there's like this row of diamonds. I still have to do these outside deals. And then that row, and that's it. So I'm kind of thinking I may just, you know, screw magical stitches and just keep going on this until it's done. Because I'm so close, I think I could finish this in a couple of nights, and then it will be off my list. Um, I did change the verse. So the original verse says, when land is gone and money is spent, then learning is most excellent. And I, I just hear that in Keanu Reeves's voice, saying, excellent. I don't know, it just sounds dumb to me. So, um, it, I mean, that is a very appropriate hornbook verse. I just can't, I just can't. So the verse that I chose um, is actually a Dumbledore quote. And it's, words are our most inexhaustible source of magic. So I thought, you know what, that's kind of a perfect thing to work on this year since I'm doing magical stitches. Um, and so I'm stitching on a 40 count tin roof by weeks. Let's see, you can totally see through that. Um, and the silk that I'm using is a silk in colors called Elephant and Castle. And this silk, I love it. Um, it you know, it goes from a blue to a purple. Um, to a light blue. I love it. I love the color of it, but mostly this was a silk that I used in my midi mystery chatelaine, which was my first chatelaine ever. Um, 
And so it's special to me because of that. And then also Elephant and Castle, you know, at the time that I got the kit for this, I looked at that thread color and I was like, what the heck? And then sure enough, I was reading um, in Harry Potter and there was a reference to an Elephant and Castle pub, I think. And so um, this is just, it's kind of totally my Harry Potter piece, um, subtly. So anyway, uh, I think I'm just gonna keep going on this until I get it done. I think I can finish that over one verse tonight because really all I have left is um, part of the word source of and then magic. And then the rest of it is, you know, the outside border and those little doodads at the bottom and that's it. So I think I can get it done in the next couple of days. Um, and that should keep me busy until my thread shows up so that I can get back to anniversary of the heart. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this project bag and tell you about that in just a minute. Um, so that's everything that I've worked on, um, stitching wise. Not stitching wise, um, I worked on project bags. So no spoilers, Sylvia, no spoilers. I worked on uh, sewing project bags for the exchange that Sylvia and I are doing. I have finished her bag. I made myself basically a matching bag. Um, and as soon as she receives it, I will show it to you guys. I'm not even gonna show you mine. Um, but while I was at it, I also made another project bag. So um, when we were going to get together and learn how to do these, um, a friend of mine had bought this gorgeous fabric while she was in Paris and she bought a ton of it. Um, and so she gave each of us enough so that we could have a project bag out of it. Isn't it gorgeous? And it's like a linen fabric. It's so pretty. Um, so I, you know, had this, I had the vinyl cut. Um, she gave us the interior fabric as well. Um, a couple of us used a different option. Um, one of my friends uh, supplied the zippers, one supplied the vinyl, and uh, one taught us how to make project bags. Unfortunately, my walking foot had gone on walkabout, so I wasn't able to do mine while we were there, and so I decided that while I was working on mine and Sylvia's bags, I would also finally put this one together. So it's all together and I'm super happy with it. I love how it turned out. Um, and you know, the zipper works and all the stuff that's on the inside is supposed to be on the inside and all the stuff that's on the outside is supposed to be on the outside. So you can't beat that. I have not put a project in this yet because I don't know what to put in it. I'm sure I'll find something. But um, we were talking about the zipper pulls while we were doing this and um, while I was stitching, sewing this up, I thought about my Sucra Sucra Miniatures um, knitting progress keeper that's a macaron. And so I put this on here and it, because I just think it works perfectly. It's like the perfect zipper pull. Um, and then I can see it all the time, which I'm happy about. So. I haven't figured out what to put in this yet, but I will. So, project bag done. Actually three done, but I can only show you one. Happy with that. And I got the project bag that Sylvia made for me. And she made it big enough so that you fit an 11 by 11 Q-snap in it. Um, it's got this fabulous striped fabric on the inside and up here, and then the fabric she used on the back, she said, was a nod to my art history degree. So, it's Frida fabric. Isn't that super fun? I love it so much. Absolutely love it. And she made the cutest zipper pull. 
she used a portion of the fabric and just made this cute little fob with that mini rickrack. Isn't that the cutest? I love it. Love it so much. And I love that it fits my 11 by 11 key snap because that's pretty much what I use all the time. So I love being able to have that in there and it fits. <clears throat> so um, eventually, Sylvia will get her bag and then I can show you what I made. And so we did that in for June, even though now it's July. We did that for June and then we're planning on doing it again for August because she will be here um, in August, I think briefly. So we can exchange in person, which will be helpful so I won't have to go to the post office. Um, the other thing that I worked on is living now in my De La Luna bag um, that a friend of mine made for me. Eyeball fabric on the back glitter vinyl on the bottom and um, so I worked on my hex on the beach a little bit I told you I was working on this you know a little bit at a time Diana and I had started doing our EPP um, so I got row 8 sewn on completely so it is all on yay so row eight is done. And I already had row nine basted. And so I have started sewing row nine together. And here is where I'm at on that. And row 10 is basted too. So as soon as I get row nine, um, sewn together, then I will sew it onto the hole, and then I'll start sewing row 10 together. So, super fun, and um, I'm happy that this actually fits perfectly in this bag. So, hex on the beach. Tula pink, English paper piecing. Um, and so for this week, for homework assignment, um, it was the premise is around uh, number twelve Grimald Place, and so we had to post a whip list and choose up to twenty whips. And so for this week, you need to work on two of the three of either project one, two, or 12. And so I decided I'm not working on project one because it's an over one sampler that I just honestly don't want to work on. So I'm going to work on, if I decide to do homework, I may just blow it off this week. Um, so project number two, it's in my Harry Potter bag from Socks for Mom, and it is Simple Things, Blackbird Designs. This is an old whip, and it's on my stitch line. So here's where I'm at on that. So I'm actually getting pretty close to a finish, so I wouldn't mind putting some love in on this. So that's one, that's um, project two. And then project 12 is my Jenny, Bre Jenny Bean Christmas sampler. So <coughs> I could do some more Christmas stitching if I wanted um, for Christmas in July. Or I can work on my horn book until it's done and then just work on Anniversary of the Heart. We'll see what happens. Um, so that's kind of my plan for what I'm gonna do. Um, I only had a couple other things I wanted to share with you. So one of them is, as I have been going through things 
and uh, you know looking at what I have and taking stock of it I had been in the back of my head thinking about this for a while but I did unearth it the other day and so this is a shepherd's bush stocking that I stitched a long time ago and it's stitched on the called for you know 18 count linen or whatever um, with the called for threads it has all of the cute charms on it little vegetable garden I think this is birdie's stocking and this is never going to be finished or used in my house so I reached out to Michelle Bendy and asked her you know after I saw um, that Emily eclectic possessions had donated one of her whips um, to be auctioned off I asked Michelle if she could use this one and so she said yes send it to me so my plan is to get this in the mail ASAP so that she can use it for one of her charity auctions hopefully this month um, because I think her um, the charity is for a uh, women's shelter for um, domestic violence which would be great if that could raise some money for that and then it won't be living in my house um, and the other thing is that at our quilt guild at the end of last month um, we always have uh, door prize raffles <laughs> so when you come in you get a raffle ticket if you have your name tag on you get a second ticket and my number was called and so I got this fabric bundle and it is all Christmas fabrics this is from Moda um, it's from a line called um, to be jolly and this is a fat eighth bundle and I just thought how cute is that I know I can do something with this um, super cute so I'm thrilled to have this I'm thrilled to you know have the problem of finding something to do with this and you may recall last time I think I showed you I had I got some of those little you know candy moto candy charm packs out of this fabric as well so I have some little um, two and a half by two and a half inch squares of this also that I could make use of so super fun um, I don't have my order from one two three stitch yet with all my threads so I can show you there so I think that's it I think that's all I've got for this time um, if you are waiting on a package for me in the mail do not be alarmed I am a slacker I have not been to the post office I know I need to go um, I have a project bag I need to put in the mail I have a stocking I need to put in the mail I have some anniversaries of the heart charts I need to put in the mail. I have a giveaway that I need to mail to the winner. Yeah. So please accept my sincere apologies for being a total doofus. All right. Oh, and the last thing, um, Diana, it is Kismet. And Michelle Bendy have um, collaborated and put together a freebie of Diana's um, It's You I Like piece um, which is from a Mr. Rogers song and she has graciously shared it with the world and um, I'm definitely going to be stitching one or more of those and um, I hope that I see tons of you also stitching them so if you're interested you can go look at Diana's um, it is kismet stitches look at her Instagram she's got a link there or um, you can go to her last floss tube video called the hangover and um, there's a link to it there too so enjoy
Um, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.